didn't help, not a bit, it was very sad. Um, but after this, I decided to focus more on, you know, my illustration and my work, and I was like, okay, well, if I'm not gonna make my dream happen this time, I need to make it happen in another way. And so I was totally focused, um, but not only on my illustration, I decided that I'm here, we're paying a ton of money for me to go to this school, and I'm gonna try out as many things as I can because I might as well take advantage of what I have right here and right now. So I remember taking graphic design classes, I took a lettering class, I took basically anything you can imagine. And at the time, these new 3D computers and these new 3D uh, programs were anything that everyone could talk about. I mean, it was everywhere. So I thought, okay, why not? I'll take one of these classes. And I was actually fairly good at it, and I actually fairly enjoyed it. So I thought, okay, well, I'll take a couple more classes, and I ended up having this fairly decent demo reel um, that I was able to show prospective, you know, I guess, jobs. Not that I wanted to do animation, because I didn't want to do animation. Um, but then, alas, I did. <laughs> I remember sitting on the floor of my parents' den, and I was working on my first freelance illustration project for a children's magazine. This is after I graduated. And one of my friends called up and said, hey, um, this movie is hiring, would you like to interview? And I was like, hmm, no, I don't think so. No interest. And he said, well, why don't you just do it, because it'll be good practice for interviews. And I thought, well, that's a good idea, okay. And I have my demo reel, um, what's, the, what's the movie? And he said, well, the movie's South Park. And I said, what's that? And <laughs> he said, well, there's a TV show called South Park on Comedy Central. Maybe you should check it out. And I'm like, okay. So I went over to my neighbor's house because we didn't have cable. And I watched an episode of South Park. I was a very sheltered little girl <laughs> at the time. And this was completely shocking to every part of me. And I was like, holy cow, what is going on here? But I thought, well now I really don't care if I get the job, right? I'm just going for practice anyway. Um, so I took my little demo reel, which had all these um, very child-friendly uh, uh, animations. Like, one was um, this young lady in a bumblebee style evening gown and a giant top hat. Remember the coloring book. Um, and she was singing opera. And then I had this, um, this flea jazz band on the back of a dog's back. And uh, I thought these were so ridiculous. I'm gonna go into this interview and they're gonna laugh at me. But I went in anyway and um, I was offered the job. So, oh there's Heart Center, sorry. Children's with illustration. There we go. Um, so I'm offered this job and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what do I do? Do I take this job? Because it's not at all what I wanted to do. It's not at all children's with illustration. And it's inspiring and um, exciting children for very, very different reasons than what I had initially planned. Um, but they offered me, you know, a pretty nice salary for somebody just getting out of college. And I thought, it's only a year. So it's totally fine. I'll do this for a year. I'll get some experience. And then I'll go out and I'll continue my children for the illustration. Um, so I did it. And I actually really loved it. It was an amazing, amazing experience. And so I'm moving along with that. you know. And about probably two or three months into it, I get another call from another friend who says, you know, there's this street painting festival in Florida, and they're looking for another artist. Would you like to participate? And I said, okay, but what do I have to do? She said, you have to do a street painting. And I said, I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, you're gonna have to show me what this is. So she showed me, and I agreed, because it was a free trip to Florida for five days to basically sit on the floor for three of those days and create a 10 by 10 foot painting. Well, I went and I created a um, Delator painting and I fell in love 
with this concept of creating artwork on the ground for people to see this process. And it was one of the most amazing things I could have ever done, and it changed my life completely. And it was so different from anything else. You know, the whole concept of street painting is to create an artwork from start to finish on the street, have people witness this production, and then have it wear away. And the idea that I was outside, I wasn't sitting in front of a computer. People were coming up, they were talking to me. Me, who was a complete introvert, complete introvert, and I, there's no way I would be able to stand up here and talk to you if I hadn't street painted for so many years, um, because it really kind of brought me out of my shell. But I learned, basically, to, to create these artworks that I had always admired and loved on the street. And it was an incredible experience. So when I came home from, from that event, I started applying to every street painting festival you can imagine so that I could do this. And these are all volunteer events. So I would go, volunteer my time, paint an amazing painting over the weekend for no pay, just the cost of basically my pastels, and, and then I would go home. And it was invigorating. I loved it. And one of the things that I loved about it was that I really learned how to paint. You know, you learn in school, especially art school, how to oil paint, how to paint with acrylic, how to, you know, apply light and shade and depth and things like that. And so I knew all that. But the idea of taking an eight and a half by 11 printout of a master painting and reproducing that at 12 by 12 feet really means that you have to investigate what's going on and how this artist originally created this work. Um, and it made me so much better at painting than I ever would have imagined. And I'm, I'm so grateful. For that. Um, and of course the fact that it was a public activity was, was even more fun, but it also meant that there were going to be moments when things didn't always work out. <laughs> and you're in absolute everyone's face, you know, so um, some of the most uncomfortable moments are when you're trying to draw that, you know, very oddly viewed hand or foot, and it's not working out, but everybody is standing around and watching you, that's extremely nerve-wracking. And I just, I start to sweat, of course, and I get really nervous, and I'm like, go away, go away, go away, in my head. Um, but those are things that you have to work out, and so it really kind of brought me out of my shell and, and made me a more, I think, personable person, I'll say. Um, so after the South Park movie wrapped, um, I moved to join the TV, the TV series, and I was actually there for eight years. A long time for someone who didn't want to do animation. Um, but the amazing thing about working at South Park is that we would have these fantastic summer hiatuses. So for three months, I would have unlimited access to my freedom, and I would go street paint. And I would participate in any festival I could, everything that I could that had to do with street painting. And I did that for eight years. So from fall to spring, I would work at South Park behind a computer in a cubicle. And then um, the rest of the year, I would create large scale paintings on the street. Um, it's interesting for me now to kind of look back at, at what I did in these summers because, I mean, I was really making a small living, you know, doing, doing this artwork, um, basically out in public, much like people did 500 years ago in Italy when this all started. And it was started as, as a way for artists who a lot of them, um, war veterans could no longer do their their usual job. They would go out on the street and they would take their pastels and they would create a beautiful image of uh, Madonna and Child, um, mostly in front of a church or cathedral. And as people came out of church, 
if they liked the artwork, they would toss coins directly on the painting. And so these artists creating the Madonna and Child became known as Madonari. And it's basically the term for street painter in Italian. Um, and in Italy, it's very much a respected form of art. And street painters themselves are looked up to with a very, very high honor, which here I think is quite different because a lot of times if I'm on the street, people think that I'm begging for money, which is unfortunate for um, the artwork itself that is coming from something with such beautiful folk art roots. I learned so much from that and it was so inspiring to be part of such a, an important event in this culture. <coughs>